Life in North Korea, at least for those who aren't a member of the wealthy elite, is unpleasant to say the least. This country can barely afford to feed its own people, and it asks for a lot from them in return. We will show you some of the strange things that are requirements for North Korean citizens. Hitting the subscribe and notification buttons aren't required, but they are the best way to get the latest content from the riches. Television. Hey, being forced to watch television doesn't sound so bad since most of us spend way too much time watching it anyway of our own volition. But this is North Korea we're talking about, so their entertainment is entirely propaganda about how superior their country is. On the rare occasion that North Korea does release a film, it's mandatory to attend screenings of it and to praise it no matter how terrible it truly is. If you choose to watch television in your own home, you'll have access to an incredible five television channels. There is a sports channel, a culture channel, a station dedicated entirely to speaking negatively about South Korea, and a couple of news channels. Channels. Importing any other media to watch is strictly forbidden and carries a hefty punishment. Former North Korean math professor Jung Se-yul was a member of a privileged class when he decided to risk it all just to watch some black market DVDs of a South Korean soap opera. For his crime, he was demoted to the position of manual laborer and was subjected to intense social stigma because he was tainted by South Korean ideas. He believes that the bribes he was able to afford was the only thing stopping him from being imprisoned. Voting on paper, North Korea is a democracy. We'll just let that sink in for a moment. While the United States has to encourage its citizens to vote every year, North Korea has a near-perfect 99.7% voter turnout. How do they manage such spectacular numbers? By making voting mandatory, of course. Voting is an important part of any democracy, so while we don't condone forcing people to do it, at least these people get to participate in the democratic process, except that they only get to vote for a single candidate. Candidate. Each nominee has been pre-selected by the ruling party, so you're faced with just one name on the ballot. You don't even have to check anything off, just look at it and drop it in a box. It's an extremely strange charade that makes you wonder who exactly it's for. Does it make the people feel like their voices are heard even though they clearly are not? Or do the candidates just like hearing that they got 100% of the votes? Perhaps the most disturbing implication is that this is what citizens of North Korea think democracy actually looks like all over the world. World. Dwarf Village People with a genetic condition known as dwarfism live relatively normal lives in most modern societies. Some, such as Game of Thrones star Peter Dinklage, even make it onto the big screen. But in North Korea, dwarfism is seen as completely unacceptable, and officials worry about people with it tainting the gene pool. Their original plan was simply to eliminate such people at birth, but in a rare moment of insight, realized that would probably enrage a lot of other countries for obvious reasons. They decided the next best thing was to require all citizens under four feet tall to live in a specially designated place known as Dwarf Village. Once in the village, they are forcibly sterilized and given meager rations. North Korea is notoriously unkind to people with certain genetic conditions or disabilities, but requiring citizens with dwarfism to live in a miserable village by themselves is a whole new low. Government officials claim that dwarfism is caused from personal or ancestral sin, and we won't even bother delving into why that is scientifically impossible. Once in the village, travel is not allowed, which the government claims is for their own safety, since they are too small to ride on trains, which we are pretty sure isn't a real thing. Worship People in North Korea are required to worship daily or risk severe punishment, but you won't see them praying to any religious figure that you're likely familiar with. Instead, they worship the former supreme leader Kim Il-sung. Statues and photos of him are everywhere, and houses are required to have well-maintained photos of Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il on the walls. Before eating, it's expected for families to thank Kim Il-sung for their food. Just imagine if they passed a law in the United States that said you had to display photos of Barack Obama and George George Bush in your house and thank them before you ate your meal and consider how ludicrous that idea is. Even when writing about him in books or other publications, there are rules to follow, such as making sure that his name does not get split onto two different lines or two different pages. Children are taught in school that he had a wide range of superpowers that would have made any Avenger jealous, including invisibility, super speed, and turning pine cones into bullets, although we aren't sure how useful that last one would be. Christmas is cancelled. A cruel person cancelling or attempting to thwart Christmas is the plot of many holiday specials. It's also a real thing that current dictator Kim Jong-un did when he decided to become a real-life Grinch. 
Instead of decking the halls, North Korean citizens are required to celebrate Kim Jong-un's grandmother, Kim Jong-suk. She was the wife of his grandfather, the highly esteemed Kim Il-sung, and the mother of Kim Jong-il. Not only did Kim Jong-un require all of his citizens to participate in his made-up holiday instead of Christmas, but he threw a royal tantrum when he found out that South Korea was planning to erect a Christmas tree near the border. His rage and threats were so great that South Korea decided it just wasn't worth the risk. Allegedly, Kim Jong-suk was born on Christmas Eve and was known as the sacred mother of the revolution. Still, requiring people to forego celebrating Christmas in order to better pay tribute to her seems to be a bit much especially since there are many other days in the year that don't already have a holiday associated with them. Time for our trivia question, comrades! No North Korean couple looking to get married would do so without having two of what unusual thing at the altar? Keep watching for the answer! Morning. By now, you may have noticed a trend of people in North Korea being expected to worship all of their leaders. However, it goes beyond even having to say a quick prayer before dinner. When Kim Jong-il passed away, videos emerged of bereaved citizens wailing in the streets. But were these tears genuine or were they tears of terror? Rumors began to circulate that people in North Korea would be sent to forced labor camps if they did not appear to be sad enough about Kim Jong-il's passing. They might just be rumors, however, North Korea does punish people severely if they are perceived to be less than ardent in their love of their leaders, so it's highly likely that to some extent these displays of sadness were out of fear of punishment. It's less juicy than the idea of officials measuring everyone's tears to see if they are sad enough, but it's still pretty terrifying to think about. It's believed that the outpouring of emotions is due to a mixture of terror of being punished, apprehension about the future, and possibly a form of mass hysteria. Showing allegiance is paramount in North Korea, and this may be a very unorthodox form of that. Weddings for many people, wedding days are all about the happy couple. People may claim that marriage is a government institution, but nowhere is that more apparent than in North Korea. Brides won't be throwing their bouquet for their guests to fight over because they'll need to bring those flowers straight to a statue of Kim Il-sung as soon as their ceremony is over. When setting your wedding date, April 15th and February 16th are automatically off the table since those are the birthdays of Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il. After you make your required flower donation, you can have your wedding photos taken in front of the statue, which just sounds so romantic. For more humble weddings where the guests can't afford gifts, they often pay a small fee to borrow gifts from the marketplace. After a photo session, the gifts are then returned. There is no such thing as a honeymoon in North Korea, and newlyweds are expected back at work the next day after the wedding. Because North Korea does not focus on the individual, a marriage is seen as something to be done for the family. As such, it's expected that each family member will consent before anyone walks down the aisle. Team Building when it comes to things that are universally frowned upon, child labor is typically one of them. Not to mention, and there is just no right way to say this, that children typically aren't very effective at manual labor. This means that to resort to such a gross human rights violation for some labor, North Korea must be quite desperate. In North Korea, impoverished children as young as five are forced to toil for up to 10 hours a day doing manual labor. Footage was uncovered of children between the ages of five and eight years old working to repair train tracks. How does North Korea put a positive spin on this? They call it team building. These children have been taken out of school to perform backbreaking work, but think of what a great team they are. This totally blows all of those ropes courses and trust falls we did back in school right out of the water. During their workday, sorry, we mean team building activities, the children are expected to learn and recite verses extolling the virtues of Kim Jong un. Fertilizer. There is a serious food shortage in North Korea, and their farms are struggling now more than ever. The government blames the weather and people not loving North Korea enough, but one actual factor is that nobody will sell them the chemicals they need in order to make proper fertilizer. South Korea used to help them out in this regard, but North Korea repaid their kindness by sinking one of their ships, so they pulled back on their generosity. Since desperate times call for desperate measures, North Korea decided to call upon its citizens to do their duty. That's right, human fertilizer is a thing in North Korea, and each family has a certain quota that they are required to fulfill or they risk being punished. Some people have even been known to steal the droppings of other people, so it's not uncommon for people to actually lock up their outhouses to prevent this. 
North Korean refugee Yunmi Pak claims that this caused quite the competition in her household, as family members rushed to meet the quota, though she claimed her aunts were the most competitive. Military Service Despite the size of their country, North Korea has an obscenely large military of over 1.2 million members. Of course, it helps that military service in North Korea is compulsory, with men serving for a decade and women serving from the time they graduate high school until age 23. Having women forced to serve in the armed forces is very unusual, but Kim Jong-un has been known to make threats about his 500,000 strong army of female soldiers. So are these women getting top-notch training? Of course not. This is North Korea we're talking about. They don't even receive adequate supplies of food, and a staggering number of them report brutal treatment from their male counterparts. Kim Jong-un certainly enjoys showing off his female soldiers, but it seems like all his other weapons, these might be just for intimidating his many enemies, as many wonder how much actual combat training they receive. Others claim that he does actually support some women soldiers to some degree, since so many male soldiers were lost during a famine. To get the level of marching precision that you see during a parade, these women are subjected to hundreds of hours of drills to get it just right. This is a wedding tradition that might not catch on outside of North Korea. It involves bringing two chickens, a hen, and a rooster to the altar. People come forward and fill the beak of the hen with dates and flowers, while the rooster gets a mouthful of red chili. North Korea has so many strange rules and regulations, and we don't even know all of them yet. Who knows what will be the next big news to come out of this insular country. As always, thanks for watching our video, and don't forget to please subscribe to The Riches for more. Bye for now.